Welcome back to Animal of the Week. It's been a while, so let's get right into it. This week is a brand new animal discovered just recently, and so a lot of the information on this animal is speculative, but grounded in logic, reason, and the information we know about other similar species. The Antarctic Strawberry Feather Star has sort of taken the internet by storm since its discovery, which was published in July. Largely due to its otherworldly appearance, some have compared it to the facehuggers in Alien, and the fact that it has Antarctic in its name, which usually sparks interest. The strawberry comes from the fact that the nub at the bottom of its body from which the feather-like structure protrude resembles a sort of knobbly strawberry. Feather star obviously derives from it being a feather star, a type of untethered crinoid found all over the world's oceans. The Antarctic Strawberry Feather Star is not the only new Antarctic Feather Star. Previously, it was believed that only one species existed, but authors of the paper Resolving the Taxonomy of the Antarctic Feather Star Species Complex Promacocrinus Kerguelensis, Emily L. McLaughlin, Nerida G. Wilson, and Greg W. Roos have found that there are now actually eight species. Four new species were found and captured from the sea floor, and following DNA analysis determined to all be separate species. This then prompted a wider search of the existing archive of Antarctic feather star specimens. After more DNA analysis, three more species were discovered from these existing specimens. The poster child of the new discoveries is the Antarctic Strawberry Feather Star. All are fairly similar though, and the largest difference is the number of tentacles, or more properly known as cirri, and also the coloration. Cirri are different from tentacles as they are less flexible, strong, or sensitive. The strawberry flavour has 20 cirri. Six of the species have this many, with the other two having just 10. The strawberry variety also have different colorations. The original Antarctic Feather Star has a yellowy brown coloration, compared to the strawberry that has a darkish purple shade to it. Despite this, many of the differences between species are incredibly subtle, and so simply identifying them by appearance is what led to the assumption that there was only one Antarctic species. DNA analysis has allowed for the differences to be discovered. Mitochondrial cytochrome oxidase subunit 1 is the genetic marker used to find the difference between the species. According to this paper, essentially this gene is highly variable and mutates so that it is unique in each species and therefore is an indicator of when there is a different species. It is very much in the name that these animals live in Antarctica. They are found in a rather large range of depths, from 65 to 1170 metres down. Other crinoids, such as sea lilies, are actually attached to the sea floor, but these feather stars are free floating, which is why their depth range is so great. They also use their cirri to grip and walk along the sea floor, or more commonly use them as a form of propulsion in the water column. These feather stars are suspension feeders, meaning they'll sit in strong currents and feed upon any particulates that come by them, from plankton to detritus. Anything with nutritional value is important in such an open and expansive environment. They catch these particulates with tube feet, small protruding spine-like objects on the ends of their feathery cirri. They will be covered in a mucus to trap anything passing by, which is then rolled into a ball along its body and moved to its mouth. Surprisingly, feather stars do not reproduce asexually. They are either male or female and so require each other to reproduce. They do this through broadcast spawning, where the male will release sperm into the water and the female will release the eggs, which will then hopefully meet each other and fertilise. The larvae are thought to have a yolk that makes them buoyant, allowing them to spread all over the ocean and live in many different depths as they are carried along by the strong and nutritious currents and upwellings of the Antarctic Sea. Obviously having only just been discovered, there is no idea about their population size or trend, and it is very hard to find out such information with deep sea dwelling animals like this, especially ones in the Antarctic. We can't say exactly what may prey upon these feather stars, but in general sea urchins and fish of all sizes prey upon other species. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.